All right, so the topic of these notes is uh, transformations. So likely a lot of this is going to seem familiar to you. So uh, we're going to just look at some parent functions that you are familiar with from the past, and then we're going to revisit the topic of transformations. All right, so I have six graphs available here for six parent functions. So we're going to kind of self-assess. The linear function, easy. Passes through the origin. Ooh, constant rate of change. Okay, and the equation that belongs to it is y equals x. That's our starting point. Absolute value. The equation, y equals absolute value of x. So at any point, you might want to self-assist by stopping the video. If you think you know where I'm going, stop the video, and then put down what you think, or, you know, where we're heading, and then turn the video back on. Uh, square root starts at the origin and heads off in this direction, slowly increasing. And the equation is y equals square root of x. All right, and then we have a quadratic. And we've looked at that in a previous video. I'm sure you're going to do a much better job than I am. It's just not too easy writing with this um, pen. y equals x squared. All right, this is the cubic function down here. We've looked at that as well. Y equals x cubed, and the reciprocal graph. We have a branch in quadrant one, and a branch in quadrant four, or pardon me, quadrant three. And the equation is y equals one over x. All right, so we're going to do some transformations, and these are the six parent functions that we're going to be working with. All right, we need to get some language down about transformations, so we're going to do that in the next part. Okay, you can see right down here where it says transformations. Okay, what's a rigid and a non-rigid transformation? Well, a rigid transformation change to the parent function maintains the basic shape, the original shape of the graph. So if you think about the different things that you can do that wouldn't distort the graph, that would maintain the shape, okay, that would be your shifts. So on this blank, write down horizontal shift. So you can slide the graph left and right. Likewise, any vertical shifts would be a rigid transformation. And can you think of one more transformation that would maintain the original shape? Yep, reflections. Okay, what about a non-rigid transformation? Well, obviously that means you're going to distort the shape. So that would be any of your um, stretches or shrinks. And we're going to look at horizontal stretches and shrinks and vertical stretches and shrinks. So making it wider or more narrow. You might want to call that compression. If you shrink it, all right, and then we're going to look at vertical. All right, so just some terms there. All right, so let's look at some vertical and horizontal shifts, some rigid transformations. Okay, what does that look like in the equation format? I mean, I can see graphically that a shift left, right, you know, that would be a horizontal shift. <clears throat> the shift up, down would be a vertical shift, but what does it look like in the equation? Okay, so let's say that we started with some function h. Okay, and what we're going to do with that is we're going to base everything off of the f graph. So, um, a vertical shift C upwards, what effect does that have on the equation? Well, if I start with, I guess, an f of x graph, and I shift it up some C units, that C just represents a number. That would be the way the equation would look if you had a vertical shift C units upward. Well, for C units downward, my new function h of x would be the parent function f of x, okay, minus some value C. The horizontal shifts is where it gets kind of weird. 
Okay, if I'm going to shift the graph C units to the right, inside the parentheses with the X, if I'm going to go to the right, it's backwards in our brain, opposite to logic, I guess. It's going to be X minus C. You might think that's a shift, um, you might want to think that's a shift um, to the left because of the subtraction sign, and we think of subtraction going to the left, um, but it's actually for the horizontal shifts the opposite of our logic or reasoning. So H of X is C units to the left. Well, if I'm going to go C units to the left, then it's going to be plus C, opposite of going left or opposite of the negative. All right, look at, let's look at some effects on equations when we talk about reflections in the coordinate axes on a function, y equals f of x. All right, well, what does the reflection in the x-axis look like? Well, if we reflect f of x, then the new equation h of x, okay, if we reflect it in the x-axis, okay, and if you think about a visual, you take a graph and you reflect it through the x-axis, the x's stay the same of reflected points. The x coordinates to stay the same, but the y's are opposite. So that means that if my reflection is through the x uh, axis, that this y has to become its opposite. All right, let's look at this one. Reflection in the y axis. Ooh. <laughs> All right, if I were to take a graph and reflect it through the y axis, think of an even function. If I took this point and its reflected point, these are opposites of each other. They have the same y, okay, but they have opposite x's. So that would look something like this, that the new function is actually the original function with opposite x's. Okay, so a reflection in the y, or excuse me, in the x, and a reflection in the y. Opposite y's and opposite x's here. All right, so what are we going to do in the homework? So let's look at some examples. Okay, I have page 128 here because I just pulled some problems from the book that we're going to do as examples. All right, so this is what number 8 looks like, and the objective is to graph F, G, and H in the same coordinate plane. So look at F. It's the parent function. G, we have a change to the parent function, and H, we have multiple changes to the parent function. Let's see if I can color code this. We're going to let the parent function be in red. Okay, then we're going to let 3x squared be a vertical shift. It's a vertical shift when the 3 is on the outside here. So we're kind of jumping ahead. So we have a vertical, excuse me, did I say vertical shift? It's a vertical stretch. Hopefully I did say that. Okay, so what does it mean when you take the parent function and you stretch it? Well, it means that the y coordinates are all three times bigger than what they originally were. So if I'm standing here at this point and I want to take just the y, keep the x, but take the y, whatever coordinate that is, like two, and multiply it by three, well, that goes way up here. So a stretch is like taking the two ends of this graph, your, t your two hands or whatever, and you're stretching it, pulling it straight up. So this is just a rough sketch. We don't have to put points on here. Okay, but it would look like this. It would be vertically stretched. Okay, and it looks like we can put this last function here in a different color. All right, what are we doing to the parent function? Well, it looks like we have two rigid transformations. Okay, thinking about the previous notes, we're going to shift the parent function left to, I know the positive kind of you see that as the right, but we're going to shift it left to. This is a vertical shift up one. So left to and up one. So let's start with the parent function's origin and move it left two and up one. And that's where we're going to kick the graph off from. And remember these are, this one's a rigid transformation right here. I should put that here. Because the shape of what's in green should look similar to what the shape was in red. I didn't do a good job of that, but it should be about opening the same. Okay, this was a non-rigid transformation. I distorted the shape. 
made it thinner. If you're not able to color code, then you might want to come in here and label each of your graphs as well. Give them a name so we can keep it straight. So this would be f of x here. Oops, that's supposed to be red. Okay, and the name in blue would be g of x. You're just doing it all in one color. And what's in green would be my h of x. Okay, so if you're unable to color code them, it's, it's probably best to go ahead and uh, label them with their names. Okay, let's look at the next, next example. Okay, so this was um, just problem 16 in the textbook. All right, so it appears in problem 16 that um, we have the parent function that's square root. We're going to apply a multiplier to that, that uh, parent function on the outside. Uh, when the multiplier is on the outside of the function, not in with the x, that's going to be a vertical change. Okay, that's going to be a vertical stretch or shrink. And depending upon this value, okay, it's either a vertical stretch or a vertical shrink. And because this value is less than 1, we call it a vertical shrink. So at this point, I'm going to come back and I want to make a comparison to g of x in problem 8. Okay, so I think what would be best is for us to come back here and denote this as a vertical stretch. Okay, and that's when the c value, we'll call this number right here a c value, is greater than 1. Let's come down to example 16. This is a vertical shrink. So a vertical shrink occurs, shrink, okay, occurs when your c value, which is your constant that you're multiplying here, is between 0 and 1. Kind of jump of the gun because in the next video you're going to get the exact um, you know, definition of these vertical stretches or shrink. I knew that you could handle it because you've done this in the past. Okay, but we'll look at it more formally tomorrow. All right, so this is a vertical shrink right here. So if you want to compare it to the last graph, if this is a vertical stretch here in blue, it was made thinner, a vertical shrink would actually make it look wider. Okay, it would widen the graph. All right, let's draw all three of these on the same coordinate axes. So the parent function is going to be in red. If you can color code it, great. If not, just make sure and name it. Let me take that right away. Okay, that didn't happen. <laughs> Parent function is square root. All right, well, how does G graph? Well, again, the parent function, square root, vertical shrink. Well, what does that look like on this? To make it wider? Well, to make it wider, that's kind of harder to, harder to determine. So let's just look at numeric, numerically what might happen. Okay, if this is the parent function, let me choose a point on here. Um, if this is the square root graph, if I put 4 in for x, the square root of 4 is 2. So let's just look at this point right here, 4, 2. Okay, where do I put the vertical shrink? Do I put it above or do I put it below? So that's the question. Well, let's come over here. If I plug in 4 for x, but take half of it, well, if I take half of the answer, the square root of 4 is 2. If I take half of the 2, I'm going to get a 1. So a half of all these y-coordinates. Okay, so in blue... Okay, I'm going to draw the vertical shrink. Well, the shrink is going to have us fall below. All the y-coordinates are half. Okay, they're going to fall below the parent function. So just think of numbers, working with numbers, and where those points would plot. So this would be 4, 1. If I were to plug 4 in here, find its square root, and then take half of that, I'd get 1. All right, let's look at the last one. All 
All right, so it looks like we have a reflection. So that's a rigid transformation. Okay, and then we have a shift right, which is also another rigid transformation. Okay, so rigid. Okay, whereas the previous transformation up here in blue, remember that distorted the shape of the parent function? So that was what we called non rigid. All right, so let's take a look at this. So what's happening to the parent function? It looks like we're shifting it right four because the, the minus four is with the X underneath the radical. So we're going to shift the parent function right four, but then we're also going to reflect it. So let's see if we can take the graph in red, the parent function, shift it right four, and then we're going to reflect it. So it should end up looking like this right here. two rigid transformations. All right. All right, so so far in this video, I gave you a lot of background. We looked at six parent functions at the beginning. We looked at some terms. Um, we looked at some notation. Um, and then we looked at graphing some functions, just with some basic kind of transformations. In the second part of this video that you'll, you'll look at, not this video, but the second part of this section in the future videos, uh, we'll dig in a little bit deeper to this. One last problem. It's actually problem number 21 in your textbook. You're asked to describe the error in the graph that you see. And what you're given Oh my goodness, <laughs> when I try and be careful, that's what happens. Okay, we're going to take a parabola and we're going to shift it over to here and we're going to make it open up. Okay, this is what you're going to see in problem 20, 21. It gives you this graph, but then it also says, here's the equation. All right, so let's describe the error. All right, well, was the transformation done correctly? Well, look at the equation. Based on our earlier notes, okay, we know that this is a horizontal shift, okay, but it's not going to go to the right. It's going to go opposite of the sign here, so it, this should be a horizontal shift to the left. So to describe the error, okay, um, the error is that it was shifted right, not left. All right, so hopefully this was a review for transformations that you had done um, a while back.